Hi guys, welcome to Natasha Alkaline Food. On this channel, this is where we follow Dr. Saving mythology and his food list and make simple meals for your family and you to enjoy. So today we're going to make butternut squash ravioli. Let's begin. Okay, first I need to peel my three butternut squash and I use this vegetable peeler to do that. I like to do big batches when I make these foods because they do take a while to create. They are time consuming. This recipe makes a lot of ravioli, so I like to freeze half of it and then cook the rest for our meal. So it makes more than four servings, about six to eight servings, depends on how much your family likes to eat. After I peel the butternut squash, I cut off the bottom and the top of all of them. And then I use the straps and the bottom and the top as part of my broth. So I will put them in the storage bag in the freezer until I'm ready to make my vegetable broth. So I cut the butternut squash right above the fold or the top shape. So I have the seeds on one half and the other half does a half seeds. And so for this meal prep that you're watching, I am planning on using the bottom for the butternut squash ravioli and then the tops for butternut squash french fries. So if you want to see a video of the butternut squash french fries, please like this video. I need to roast the butternut squash for the ravioli. So I take the bottom halves and I cut them in half. To scoop out the seeds, I just use a spoon to scoop them out and I save the seeds to eat later. You can roast them. So after I roast these butternut squash, I turn off the oven and I stick the seeds into the oven. They are great for snacking. Okay, now it's time to roast your butternut squash. I add a little bit of oil around them so that it gets a little brown, not that much brown. And I cook it between 10 to 15 minutes depending on your oven time. And you don't want them to be too brown because then your filling will be really brown. You want them to be fork tender so you want to be able to poke the fork through. After you roast your butternut squash, you want it to let it cool a little so it's easier for you to handle. And then in a food processor, you add the butternut squash, and then you slowly drizzle one cup of spring water in the food processor until it becomes smooth. After you process your butternut squash and make it into a puree, it's time to make the dough. So you take two cups of spelt flour. You can use kombucha flour or other flowers of your liking. I haven't tried others, but you can try it out. And then some sea salt. And then you add one cup of butternut squash and you'll stir it slowly and get all the flour to incorporate into the butternut squash. So the goal here is you're trying to make sure you have no more dry spots of your flour before you start to knead it. So once you have no dry spots, then it's time to knead. You can knead inside the bowl, or you can dump it out and knead it on your table. And just keep working at it. It takes less than five minutes to get it all incorporated. You know you have finished kneading your dough if it's smooth, and as you push down on it, the dough doesn't break apart as easily. So you should have a nice smooth ball and then you wrap it in plastic or you can keep it in a bowl covered because you're going to let it rest in the refrigerator. You want it to rest so that all the glutens can meld with the butternut squash and that it'll be easier to roll out. Or you'll have a dough that breaks apart and you don't want that as you make this ravioli. You are going to make your filling as the dough is resting. If you don't have any pure alkaline applesauce, you can make your own applesauce in a food processor or you can put it in the bowl, whatever is easier for you. So take your apple and you will grate it and then you'll cut it into pieces. So you're just coring it basically. And then you'll add it to your food processor with one fourth cup of water. 
So in this video, I did add up too much water. So be careful not to add too much liquid because then your filling is going to be liquidy. The reasons why I don't use store-bought applesauce is because they have a citric acid in it and citric acid is not natural. And we want to stay with natural things um, according to Dr. Savings list. You're going to add the one cup of butternut squash and then your half a cup of applesauce. Notice how watery my applesauce is here. Make sure you get all of the spices into your food processor. Sage, ginger, onion powder, basil, and sea salt. For the measurements, look in the description below. And then you process that until it's well incorporated. So that is your filling. And then you want this filling to sit in the refrigerator while you wait until your dough is nice and rested. Now it's time to assemble. Yay! Let's get it going. Okay, you can put your ravioli together two different ways. You can do it by hand, which I have done with my daughter and it was great. Or you can use a pasta maker machine. So the machine I use here is a manual machine. It has the attachment to make spaghetti noodles or fettuccine noodles. And then it has the ravioli noodles. This is the first time I used this machine. So it was some trial and error of getting the ravioli to look right and be right. But eventually I figured it out. I also did it by hand. When I did it by hand, there was no waste. I made sure I used all of my dough. When I used the machine, I did have some waste because I was still learning how to use it. To make this ravioli using the machine, you'll follow the instructions on how to make the flat piece, and then you'll follow the instructions on how to make the ravioli. So make sure you attach the ravioli to the machine. You put the sauce in between and it makes the ravioli pieces. If you're doing it by hand, you want to roll out your dough until it's see-through. Then you cut it out into the shapes that you want. Then you add the filling and then you seal it with a fork or with a knife, but you want to make sure it's really sealed. And then as you are assembling your ravioli, you want to have on the stove some boiling spring water. So it's boiling as I assemble them. So when I made this by hand, I end up with 26 raviolis. We only cooked 12 of them and we ate them. And then when I used the machine, we made so many that I didn't even count. And I still had dough left over because I messed up, so I'm gonna make even more the next day. When you are ready to boil your ravioli, you put it in the boiling water with the salt. You want to make sure you put a lot of salt because you want the pasta to be salted. This is the second time we salted and we didn't put a lot of salt in that dough. So you really want it to be salted so you can have a good tasting pasta. So we add it in there. For the handmade one, I know we cook it for about three minutes. For the one that I made with my machine, it took about two minutes to make the ravioli. You know it's done when it's floating up to the top. That's how I determined it was done. And then I put it out on the plate where it's not touching, and then I let it sit while I make the sauce. Hi. Hi, so we're gonna taste the ravioli, <coughs> butternut squash ravioli with a, um, just a white sauce. It's, I taste it white yummy. Oh. I guess so. Mm. You like it? It's super good. Mm. We're good? Good? So, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you get? This 10 is the very, very best. You'll eat it all day long. 1 is like, it's yucky. I will never eat it ever again. I'll throw it up. Okay. You have a 10? Okay. So this sauce that we have is a white sauce. It's really yummy. Um, if you want the recipe, please comment down below and I will make a video of that sauce. We eat this with a tomato sauce. This white sauce is my daughter's favorite. And then we also eat it with the pestle sauce. So it's up to you what type of sauce you want to eat it. You can eat it plain. Um, it doesn't have much flavor, I would tell you. But my daughter likes it of it plain. And half of the reason I think she likes it is because of the butternut squash that's inside with the apple. She really likes that combination. If you want to see more, please follow us here on this channel where we post videos and then on Instagram where you can see more ideas on how to keep your family eating healthy and following Dr. Saban's uh, methodology. And thanks for coming. Bye.